Top of the fifth, that's where Aaron Hill leads off for the Red Sox. Very grateful to be joined by Rick Porcello, last night's winning pitcher for Boston. And Rick, congratulations, first of all, on a, a magnificent season. Last night, your 20th win. You are the first 20 game winner in the majors this year, the first in a Red Sox uniform since Josh Beckett in 07. When you hear 20 game winner, what does that mean to you? <laughs> uh, it's it's pretty humbling, honestly. You know, the guys, it's, it's tough to win one game in the big leagues, let alone 20. And, um, you know, to come from where I was last year and, and to be in this position and, and our team in this position, it's uh, it's awesome. Well, we all know, Rick, there's a big historical difference between 19 and 20 wins. I'm wondering about all the text and phone calls you got. What stands out after you got the 20th W yesterday? <laughs> uh, talking to my parents. You know, they, they, uh, they've been everything for me. And, um, you know, getting to call my mom and dad and, and uh, talk to them. And it, was, it was a nice moment. Now, Rick, you mentioned coming over from Detroit, signed the extension with the Red Sox, and then really a tough start to your Red Sox career, then you go on the disabled list. You've been a different pitcher since. What's the biggest difference in Get your out. mind? Get out of here. Feel free to take over on play-by-play -play anytime you want. <laughs> oh, 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 my wow. goodness. Well, for a guy who's got a gimpy knee, that's well, At least pretty he gutsy. came out with a smile on his face. <laughs> and we just saw him literally disappear. You ever see a catcher disappear? <laughs> Him keeping his eye on the baseball, peek a little bit, and then where do you go? Oh. <laughs> Look at Pedroia's reaction. Yeah, he, he wants to help him up, but he doesn't want to help him before he fell. That's what a true opponent does. Nice job, Dustin. <laughs> yep. Wow. Uh, but, but, uh, but, Rick, what, what's been the biggest difference to the, the type of guy you are now to when you first came to the Red Sox? Um, yeah, I, I think just focusing on the things that I can control, uh, executing pitches and just, you know, kind of calming down and, and settling in over here. I don't know really what happened after the, you know, I went on the DL, but since I came back, I've just had a much clearer head and been able to, uh, you know, execute the game plans that, that we're putting forward and, um, you know, it's been a lot more consistent. Well, yeah, I like the word you used, reset, Rick, after you came off the DL last year. You went back to the foundation of your pitching, that good fastball, sinking fastball. So tell me about the way you've been able to accompany that now with the four-seam fastball. I thought last night in particular, the way you added and subtracted and changed eye levels was magnificent. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's really been big. Um, you see a lot of guys elevating the ball now around the league. There's so many good low ball hitters, and, you know, even good sinkers now at the bottom of the zone. If, if, if you're, you know, repeating the ball down at the bottom of the zone, the hitter's eye level's down there, and, and they're putting much better swings on it. So, you know, I think that was one of the big things coming in this year. Uh, you know, my focus was to, to change eye levels, try and, uh, you know, generate some swing and misses with my fastball, and been able to do that. So, you know, still sinking, you know, the majority of the time. But uh, when I get guys up there that I feel like I can elevate, that's, that's what we go to instead of just, you know, trying to sink the ball below the zone, changing eye level, so it's been huge. Rick, your manager, John Farrell, told us earlier this morning that you are the most prepared pitcher he has ever been around. Now, this is coming <laughs> from a guy whose life has been pitching. Without giving away any trade secrets, can you tell us a little bit about your preparation going into every start? <laughs> I, I, honestly, I don't think it's anything special. I, I uh, you know, I get my workouts in. I, I watch my video. I, I do my, you know, I write my report. You know, the day that I'm pitching, I watch the hitters that I'm facing, and, and that's pretty much it. And just, you know, a after facing guys 20, 30, 40 times now, I, I have an idea of what they're going to do with certain pitches, and I just try and, you know, take my strengths and attack. That a baby. Get in the gap. First pitch today for the Red Sox. Comes from Chris Young with one out. Um, well, he's, yeah, being, that, he's being modest because I know how he's prepared because he went to see Paul Prep. <laughs> that's part of it. That's that, where that, he that's, learned that's, it. That's, yeah, that, that definitely helps. <laughs> but people might not know this coming out of high school, Rick. You actually had a commitment to North Carolina, which also had recruited and had commitments from Matt Harvey and Madison Bumgarner. Same <laughs> yeah. year. Yeah, we would have had a nice squad for sure. <laughs> <Not bad. laughs> Now, you signed, obviously, with Detroit. Things worked out well for you. Smoke trying to get back to first base. 
Somebody out there. Mm. Well, it's a matter of whether Smoke touched the bag before he tagged the runner or tagged the runner and then touched the bag. Farrell's trying to find out. I thought it was a brilliant play by Chris Young. It's a routine double play if he continues on the second. And he was hoping that Smoke took the force play off, which would allow him to get back. Yeah, he definitely he thought he tagged it back first. Jim Joyce on the call at first base. All right. Originally called both out. Nice job by the umpires there to get together. Ask one another, what did you see? Get the call right. Old school style. No replay. Yeah, how about that? Okay, Rick. Well, first, let's take a look at this. Now, see if he continues on. It's an easy double play. Stepped on the bag, so that takes the forced play off. Now, Young no longer forced. He's safe. Nice play. Two outs and one on. Rick, I, I have to ask you about your ball cap. <laughs> <laughs> now, this looks like it was washed up on one of the beautiful beaches of New England. It is <laughs> as salty and stained as any cap you'll find in this game. Where did the idea of keeping the same cap all year come from? Uh, I don't know. I just, uh, you know, if, if things aren't going well, I'll, I'll change it out. And things have been going pretty well, so <laughs> I've stuck with it. It's. It's pretty disgusting to be honest with you. I got to take a deep breath before I put it on before every game. But uh, now, the one you're wearing right now is obviously not yeah, that this same is the, hat. This is the reserve. This is the reserve. It's not your gamer. <laughs> Everybody in the dugout said, thank goodness. Yeah. So I guess we know how your season is going if you haven't changed your cap at all. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been all right. There is Hannigan with two outs. Is that something new for you, by the way, Rick? This idea of if you're pitching well, keep the same hat? Nah, it's just kind of, you know, you don't mess with a good thing. So that's that's what I've been rolling with this year. And I really didn't put any thought towards it. I just one day there's salt stains everywhere and it <laughs> looked disgusting. So <laughs> that's pretty much it. There's no story behind it. <laughs> Two balls and a strike to Hannigan. At least we know a little bit more about it. Three nothing Blue Jays top of the fifth. Young at first base. Rick, thank you so much for joining us. This has been a lot of fun, and congratulations once again on 20 wins, a fantastic season, and being in first place. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for having me on. There's Rick Porcello.